What's up? In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make an oat porridge bread, specifically caramelized honey, roasted oat, and brown butter porridge. Oat porridge is a versatile recipe that's gonna unlock infinite combinations of flavors for you in your baking. For example, oat, cinnamon, and raisin, or savory. You could do oat and rosemary with a touch of za'atar. Whatever you want, dried fruit, nuts, seeds, the possibilities are endless. The bread is beautiful, it smells amazing, it stays moist for days, and I hope you love it. Now, let's get started and bake this bread. So the first thing we're gonna need to do for our brown butter oat porridge bread is to build our levain. Now I'm gonna do a four hour levain, so a sort of quick build, and then while that's rising, we're gonna do our otoli. So we're gonna start by putting our container on. I've got my starter from fed last night. Uh, you can see it's looking to be fed right now. I'm gonna place this on a scale now. I'm making a larger batch. We're gonna be making 12 loaves today. So we're gonna do equal parts, which will be 250 starter. About that, I mean, you don't have to be exact. You can kind of just go for it. There we go. We've got 256. Now I'm using 30 degrees water because this container is not gonna fit in my proofer. So I wanna go a little bit warmer. And I'm gonna give myself just a little bit extra so I can maintain my starter. So I'm gonna go 260. And then we'll do 260 flour. So for the flour, I'm going to use Mostly bread flour with a small little bit. So we're gonna do about 30 grams of rye flour. Now the rye is gonna give us a little bit of extra activity and it's gonna keep that starter rising and thriving healthy. Gonna mix this up with our spatula. Mix this up really well. Get some oxygen in there. Make sure there's no dry bits of flour in there. You wanna get right in there. Scrape down the sides. If you have to, it'll help if you put a little bit of water on there. Lid on, and we're gonna let this rest for about four hours. Now, it could take three and a half to four hours depending on my temperature. Sure, I'm gonna place this here. And as I mentioned, we're gonna make 12 loaves. So I am working off an Excel that you can find available. Uh, I'll leave it in the description below. You can download it and you can change what I'm doing. So if you don't wanna use as much water, you can put the water a bit down. Uh, if you wanna use more quantity of porridge, and we'll talk a little bit about that in the mixing process, whatever you wanna customize for you, you can also play with the ingredients a little bit. So I've got, oat porridge and butter, but maybe you don't want butter. Maybe you want to use something else. So you know that there's 2%, 114 grams. You can get creative and really play around. So make sure you check that out in the link below. And I'll see you in about two and a half hours when we start our auto leaves. While we wait for our levain, we're gonna cook our brown butter porridge. So we're gonna need some butter. I'm gonna brown a little bit more than we need because I love it. We're gonna need our honey to caramelize, oats, water, and salt. Now I've taken a portion of the total salt to cook the oats because as a chef, I know that things taste better when cooked with salt. So I've removed five grams from the total to put into the oats. You don't have to do this, but you're gonna get a little bit better flavor if you do. I like to cook oats at a ratio of about three to one. Three parts water, one part oats. If you're using cracked grains, you're gonna wanna use four to one and likely soak those grains over the night. But these are quick oats, they're gonna cook super fast. Let's get it started. I'm gonna start by placing my oats on a tray and we're gonna toast these in the oven until they're nice and golden brown. The oats are in the oven, they're toasting nicely and I'm gonna start by browning the butter. So I've got a pot here. I'm gonna throw the butter into the pot. We're gonna turn the burner on and we're gonna let the butter melt. And what's gonna happen is we're gonna brown the milk solids in the bottom of the pan. So we're gonna use a whisk to keep it moving and to keep those milk solids coming off the bottom of the pan. So you wanna, you wanna whisk this as it goes so that you're scraping the milk solids off the bottom of the pan and they don't burn. It's also gonna help you brown your butter much faster. You're gonna see it go melted butter, start to foam a bit, then it's gonna get a nutty smell and then it's gonna kinda of go to a noisette. Our butter is starting to froth up nicely. I can smell that beautiful smell and it's gonna to start to brown very quickly. So make sure you have something to pour the butter into. You can see the color is nice golden brown and it's time to take this out of the pot. 
you wanna make sure you get those milk solids out of there. So we're gonna start by cooking our porridge and we're gonna take our honey and put that in the pan first. So turn your pan on and you're gonna put the honey in the pan. What you wanna see here is the honey is gonna to start to bubble up and it's gonna to start to froth and that's a really good sign that we're gonna caramelize. You have to keep a good eye on it because you don't want it to burn. So at this point, I'm gonna add my oats. If you're worried that it's gonna burn, you can start by adding a little bit of the water and that'll prevent it from burning. Okay, water. So now we've got our water, salt, caramelized honey, and oats in the pot. We're gonna cook this until very, very thick. So just make sure you stir it from time to time, and we're gonna let it thicken right up. So our porridge looks amazing. It's nice and toasty brown from the oats and the caramelized honey. It smells awesome. It's starting to thicken up, but you can see it still kind of falls off the spoon loosely. We wanna cook this until really, 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 really thick because this is gonna add hydration to the loaf. So you wanna cook as much moisture out of this as possible, get maximum flavor in there. And one of the ways you can tell is if your spoon stands up straight in the porridge. It'll take a few seconds, look at that. That's a sign that it's like thick, 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 thick. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add our brown butter to this, stir it in, put it on the tray and let it cool. You can add your brown butter. I'm gonna take this off the heat. Be real careful now, cause you don't want that to splash up to you. Just start to stir this really carefully. Oh, the smell is amazing. This is a winner for sure. You're gonna see it like starts to gelatinize and stick together. The smell is just amazing. Look at that. It's nice and thick and it's got this beautiful glossy shine to it. Now to take this out of the pan, I'm gonna use my tray that I toasted the oats on. We're gonna tip this up and just allow this to pour out, okay? So once you get this on the tray, put it into a flat layer like this so it cools quickly. And then we're gonna vent our porridge. So by doing this, it's going to allow this to cool down quickly, okay? And it's gonna allow the air to sort of move quicker. And then finally, when we actually go to put this into the bread, we can break this into little pieces. There's about 90 minutes left in our Levin build and it's time to start the Autolise process. So I've already scaled out the flour and the water. You can find the recipe in the description below. I'm gonna remove some of the water right away as sort of a second stage water. And I'm gonna place this on top of the mixer. Now, all flours are different and you're gonna cook your porridge differently. So I always reserve water just to make sure I don't overhydrate this dough. So we're gonna start by pouring our water into the mixer. Next, we'll add our flour. Flour didn't fit in one container, so I'm using two here. Okay, so it's time to start our Autolies. I've got the flour and water in. I've reserved some water. We're gonna close the mixer and start this on first speed. You always wanna start on first speed, otherwise the flour will go flying. Now, my mixer doesn't have traditional speed one, two, and three, so I just kinda go by RPM, but I'm starting in speed one, okay? I always like to keep a pitcher of water with a scraper beside so that I can get in there with the wet scraper and scrape down the sides of the bowl. So we're just gonna leave that there and that way too you can kind of adjust. I can see this is pretty dry so we're gonna add a bit of water. I was being pretty conservative with what I saved so we're gonna go a little bit. And when you're first starting out it's better to make drier breads but when you get more comfortable you can really pump the water into them. Dough is mixed enough. All we're looking for is that there's no dry bits in the dough. So when you take your hand with a bit of water and you kind of feel through the dough, you don't want to feel any dry bits or you don't want to see any dry bits. We're gonna let this stand for about an hour. I've already measured out the salt and I'm gonna put this on top so that I don't forget. That's really important and I always work in the same method. So I'm just gonna put a little towel over this and we're gonna let this sit for close to an hour. As you can see, our Levin, it's getting pretty close and we're almost ready to mix our final dough. Autolise is up and it's time to mix our dough. I have my 
oat porridge, which is cooled. I'm gonna weigh that out so that I have the exact amount. Now remember, we're gonna go between 30 to 35% to total flour. If you don't know your baker's percentage, I'll leave a link below to my video on how to understand baker's percentage. So we're gonna start by lifting the lid here. We're gonna remove our towel. How this dough stretches out after the auto leaves. If you remember before, it had no strength to it. I'm just gonna quickly measure out the levain. Normally I like to build the levain so that it's the exact amount for the dough, but I did a little bit extra because I need a little bit extra for later. Look at that, beautiful, right and ready. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add our levain to the bowl. I'm gonna use a wet scraper and I'm just gonna scrape all of that out of here, okay? like that, try and get it as clean as possible. Our total mixing time is gonna be about 12 minutes. So I like to set a timer and I'll let it run just so I can keep track. Now, it's really important to develop the gluten before we add the porridge, because the porridge is really gonna soften it. So we're gonna start by turning our mixer on. And we're gonna add a little bit of water to help mix in Levet. If you don't have a spiral mixer and you're using a planetary mixer, your mixing time is gonna vary and in general, as a general rule, it'll need to mix a little bit longer in a planetary mixer, which is this kind of style of mixer. The beauty of the spiral is it just develops the gluten and it mixes the ingredients so efficiently. Gonna add a little bit more water, but don't get carried away with the water. I'm gonna stop there. And now I'm gonna kick it up to full speed. While it's mixing, I'm gonna measure my porridge, because keep in mind, the water evaporation is different, toasting the oats, they lose a little bit of weight, and I wanna make sure I get the right amount. You should be able to pick it up in nice pieces like this. Should be like kind of jelly. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna weigh this out between 30 to 35%. So if I have a little bit more than what my recipe calls for, I'll still add it. Our dough's been mixing for about five minutes and it's time to add the salt. We're gonna add the salt with a little bit of water. So you're gonna open the mixer, you're gonna put the salt across like this, and then we're gonna just add a little bit of water on top of the salt like that. And we will close the mixer and get it going. I'm gonna hold back the rest of the water because I'm a little unsure and I don't wanna overhydrate the dough. We can always add water, we can't take away. So you can see when the dough, when you open the top of the mixer, the dough sort of slacks and it has these like pumpkin effect to it. It also has a clean ridge, a very clean line. Now the next thing we can do is with a little bit of wet hands, you're gonna pinch off a little piece, wet both your hands, and you're gonna stretch this out to see where the gluten is at. So you can see here, that's pretty well developed and it's just gonna start to tear in the corners. See that? Now that's an improved mix. Look at that, that's a beautiful window. So once you're happy with the gluten development, I'm gonna throw that little piece back in there. Now we're gonna start to add our porridge. So I'm just gonna start to drop it in here like this. You're gonna wanna let this mix until fully incorporated. It's gonna take a few minutes. The dough smells awesome. You can smell the brown butter, the nuttiness, the toast of those, it's ridiculous. That caramelized honey, oh. All right, it's time to take our dough out of the mixer. We're gonna put a little bit of grapeseed oil into our Cambro. I'm gonna wipe this out really well, and then I'm gonna spray it with a little bit of water to sort of try and emulsify the dough. Now, to take our dough out, we're gonna use wet hands. So we're gonna wet our hands. We're gonna go down to the bottom, pinch through the loaf, pinch through the dough, and you should be able to pull this out in one chunk. You can use a knife or you can kind of pinch that off and just place that right into, the, into your container. So we'll do that again. If it's really well mixed, it should kind of come out in one piece. You can see that the dough wants to stick together there, so that's a really good sign. Once the dough is out of the mixer, we're just gonna bring it together with a very simple like kind of pullover fold just to get the dough working together. First, we're gonna take the temperature 
and we want to be sort of between 27 and 29 and we are actually right on the money at 28.8 we're going to put a lid on this and now there's if you think about it there's not a huge dough mass but there's a lot of porridge so the bulk fermentation we're going to be between two and a half to three hours before we start to divide the dough and we're going to give the dough two folds after about 45 minutes an hour and a half and then the last hour and a half we don't do anything so i'll see you in 45 minutes it's been 45 minutes and it's time to give our dough our first fold. Wet hands, wet the top of your dough, get right in there, give this dough a really, really good stretch. Pick it right up and in the bin. And you should see the dough picks up all together like that and it looks great, it's wiggly. Healthy, happy. Sometimes I like to tuck in the sides, but you don't need to do that. And we're gonna put a lid on, set our timer for another 45 minutes. Whoops. And we'll give a second fold in 45. It's been another 45 minutes and it's time to do our second fold. We're gonna do the exact same thing. A Little bit of water on top now. So I'm gonna reach in there. I'm gonna give my dough a very, very good stretch and throw it on itself. And then we're gonna go again and just work your way down the dough until you get to the end. And I always like to pick it up and turn it so that it can kind of sort of, you know, relax a different way. We're gonna tuck in the sides here. And now you should see a good dough development and a good strength. And the dough is like holding its shape around the edges of the container. Keep an eye on it because it's gonna ferment fast and it's gonna rise quickly. But we're gonna be about 60 to 90 minutes before we cut and divide. I'll leave this here. It's been about three hours and our bulk fermentation is done. The dough is jiggly full of bubbles, it's a little bit rounded along the edges and it's time to pre-shape. I'm gonna dump this out on the table and then we're gonna pre-shape it into the corner. So we'll start by dumping this out here. Now it should come out pretty easy and you shouldn't have a lot of dough stuck in the bin. Um, that's a sign of good development. So you can see here, I mean, there's a little bit on the bin but nothing major. So just gonna set this aside for a moment. I got my scale here. Now I'm doing uh, 900 gram loaves, which is sort of my usual but you can do whatever is best for you. Again, check out the dough calculator. It'll help you scale your dough. These tend to be a little bit smaller than what you expect um, because they have the porridge. So for example, that's 920. So my next couple, I'll shave a few, a little bit off. And that is 840, There's that's better. I like to see a nice shelf when I cut the dough. So you should see here that it looks like it's not collapsing on itself and it's really holding its shape. So we're just gonna round these off and I like to set them up for, I like to set myself up for success for the final shape. So we're just gonna kind of put them off to the side and I'll leave myself a little bit of space for the final shape. As I said, if these touch, don't worry about it. They're gonna relax, you know, you can actually put them really close together. So if you're limited for space, um, I'm not particularly, so I'm just gonna sort of set them off to the side and then I'll have a nice space for the final shape. So we're gonna set a timer for 30 minutes. We're gonna let these relax a little bit and then we'll do our final shape. See you in half an hour. Dough is nice and relaxed and it's time to shape our final shape. So I'm gonna use a little bit of flour and we're gonna dust the tops of the loaves. Now, you can do them all. It's easier. I kinda of do what I'm shaping at once, so I'm gonna start with just a couple here. And then what we'll do is you're gonna take the scraper and flip the dough into your hand so that the floured side is down. Place that on the table in front of you. Stretch the dough out into sort of a rectangle and then we're gonna extend it down, bring the arms out, bring the top down, and then we're gonna just kinda go down the dough and cross the arms. Now, if the dough is tearing, you want to stop and let it rest a little bit longer, but this is quite soft. And then I'm just gonna flip it over on its side, and that's it. So now what I'll do is I'll clear a spot on the side, 
and I just put like a super light dusting of flour. And we're gonna start to line our breads up here to rest. So we'll do one more here. All right, so I'm gonna shape the rest of these. We'll get them into our banditones. I'll throw these two on the end. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dust these now. Um, and I like to use a combination of rice flour, rye flour, and coarse bran. But I'm actually just using straight rice flour right now uh, because that's all I got. I got my banditones ready while the dough is relaxing and now we're just gonna kind of like flip them into the basket. So what I'll do for that is we're gonna take a little bit of flour and I'm gonna lightly flour the tops of the loaves. Don't need too much here, just enough so that it doesn't sort of stick to your hands. And then I'm gonna pick up the loaf, the scraper, and I'm gonna fold the two sort of halves, or I like to call them loaves together, and place that into the basket. Okay, you can see now the dough has like a really beautiful batar shape. It's holding up really nicely. It's got lots of strength to it. And so we've sort of like, slowly develop the tension that's gonna give us that booming oven spring tomorrow. I'm just gonna keep going down the line here. And then once these are done, I'm going to cover them up with a bag, place them in the fridge, and we will bake them off tomorrow morning. After a cold slumber in the fridge, our bread is ready to go in the oven. Now I left this in the fridge for about 15 hours, and it's time to bake our first couple loaves of bread. All right, I've got my blade. Oven is hot and ready. I've preheated it to 550. I like to rip the oven, then lower it after fire the bread, and I've got a squeeze bottle. So you're gonna take my Dutch ovens out. I'm gonna take the lid off. We're gonna just lightly or gently flip our loaf out. Score in one, oh, supposed to be in one. Blade's getting a bit dull. And then we're gonna put the lid back on. And I'm gonna spray some water and that extra water is gonna help jumpstart the steam for the loaf of bread. And then I'm immediately gonna drop the temperature to 500 degrees. We're gonna set a timer for 20 minutes. After 20 minutes, we're gonna remove the lid for the Dutch oven for about 15 minutes, and we're gonna let it finish in a dry oven. So I've already baked off most of our oat porridge bread. They look amazing, they smell great. I'm sure they're gonna taste fantastic as well. Now, I'm sorry, but I couldn't wait, and I already cut one open. So we're gonna take a look inside, and it's just beautiful. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to like, subscribe. It helps me grow, it helps other people find me, and I will see you in the next video. Happy baking.